symptoms of anxiety and depression aren't reserved for the low points in our life. Sometimes the high points can trigger them as well. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, please make sure you make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button. Give the bell a few kisses so you're not missing any of this content designed to help you with your mental health or help you help someone else. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Voices in My Head by Falling in Reverse request from George, my amazing Patreon. Thank you so much for your love and support. Thank you also for getting me back into the world of Falling in Reverse. It's been a little while. I've done two reactions here on the channel. I was really impressed with those, so I'm hoping to continue that streak. I can't see any reason I wouldn't, but hey, sometimes you get a surprise, right? The voices in my head keep on telling me to pray Cause I'm spinning like a carousel, circle in the train Hit the bottom of the bottle, I don't wanna feel the pain But that is all I got for now, I don't wanna talk about The voices in my head keep on begging me to stay If I pull the trigger now, then the demons go away And I know my time is coming, so there ain't no time to waste So that is all I got for now, I don't wanna talk about The voices in my head keep telling me to choose a side It's heaven or hell, like it's do or die I'm a sad boy, you know Better. Please don't make this last forever The voices in my head keep telling me I'm not okay It's feeling like a hurricane in my brain Dark clouds, hard times, bad weather Please don't make this last forever I really love his voice, I really do the voices in my head tell me to pray and I haven't been a believer in I don't know how long at this point but they're desperate to have something to believe in and something to hold on to, something to have faith in. So I have been there where I feel compelled to pray even though I'm not a believer. You know, there's this common desire for people that are struggling with their mental health to numb the pain by whatever means necessary, be that substance or otherwise, to numb the pain. But that's often followed by a refusal to want to talk about it. And I promise that's not us being stubborn or anything like that. It's just the fact that we have this fear of hurting or offending or burdening other people. And we have this fear that their response or reaction or lack thereof is just going to make the depression worse. And we have this fear that nobody is gonna understand us. Like a suicide I'm a lost boy You know better Please don't make this last forever Voices in my head Keep telling me that I'm insane And maybe I'm a little bit That won't change Or clouds or ties Bad weather Please don't make this last forever The voices in my head Keep on telling me I'm gonna I paused right at that delicious little transition. I apologize for that. I just caught the first second of it there. But first of all, I like how the different personas are portrayed differently because I feel oftentimes, like in Heavy by Linkin Park, for example, it's Chester fighting himself, but there's no real distinction between the two. And for me, my personas have very different they would they would look very differently if they were real people so i personify them very differently in my head i have the diva who's very girly and very outgoing and kind of that elwood's figure except a little snarky and can sometimes be uh can sometimes be a bit chastising then i have the shadow that's where my dark thoughts come from that's where the urges come from to self-harm or to indulge in substances. And I have the inner child who wants to listen to NSYNC and play with Barbies and Ninja Turtles and things like that. So while I might not have as many per se, I do think that there's times when the voices are just trying so hard to, oh, to battle with each other that I, I kind of like the portrayal of 
them living their own little lives. So you have one that's just meditating and opens his third eye and is trying to be enlightened and is interrupted by all of these other voices, some of which are just sitting there, the rock star kind of guy sitting there in the chair, guy walks in, shoots him in the head. That can be how abrupt an episode can come on. So I, I like that. Uh, or the one that's just walking around, minding his own business, and another part of you comes up and tries to attack you, just feels like it stabs you in the neck. And it's also, you know, a way that we, we play out these different scenarios in our head when we're contemplating uh, suicide. So I, I, do, I do really like the portrayal of that. I like that they're all portrayed differently. Pairing not wanting to talk about it and being traumatized, those were together, uh, in, uh, in a line there. And I think that's really important because shutting down or shutting people out is often a trauma response that we don't talk about nearly enough. But I, I think that people don't understand that we're not doing that out of rebellion. We're doing that because it's a trauma response because we've been through things that have conditioned us to be that way. I also like the parallel of the dark clouds, the bad weather, uh, the hard times, because those are all things that are temporary. Find shelter, utilize what you have in your arsenal to protect yourself, but know that these things pass. Voices in my head keep on telling me I'm cursed I'm paranoid, I don't wanna make it any worse We're all gonna die, but first things first I'm gonna take the world with me when they put me in the dirt The voices in my head keep on telling me I'm cursed I'm paranoid, I don't wanna make it any worse We're all gonna die, but first things first I'm gonna take the world with me when they put me in the dirt Move! right there in the end the door is open so the door is open to that cell that was the perfect ending even though he felt like he was losing the battle he felt like he was fighting against all of these enemies which are just different uh, personas of himself different representations of himself he feels like he's fighting and he is fighting back so that's important but in the end realizes that open doors right there to walk out of and that was something that I really resonated with I've talked about this before in the concept of Lucifer how people get stuck in hell loops that's their hell is replaying this trauma this fear this experience uh, that they feel guilt or shame about but the interesting thing about it is this is the door to get out of your hell loop is right there and you just have to walk out but a lot of people trap themselves in that cycle so as I was saying earlier that I really liked how they all had different, uh, different representations. And then he's in the room and he's fighting all of these almost clones of himself. And I feel like in a way that's when the, the hundred tabs are open in your head and you don't know which one to listen to. And they're all just kind of static. They're all pretty much on the same level. Not one sticks out more than the other. And I get that when I have a panic attack. There's just a hundred tabs open. They're all competing, but none of them are really making any leeway. Uh, but I also think it can be when those different personifications of yourself kind of have the same, the same pull. So they're all on the same level at that time. And that can be a really, really scary place to be. That can be a very frightening place to be mentally because it's harder to 
to gauge which one to listen to. The thing I really love about Falling in Reverse is how they can pin these lyrics that are very poetic, uh, but at the same time, they're not complicated. They're not making them incomprehensible to someone who's listening that might not have personally experienced this. It gives them a very clear description of what this, what it's like to go through this kind of experience. I know also that a lot of people question the efficacy of uh, utilizing violence, of portraying violence to get a message across in art. And first of all, <laughs> depression isn't always pretty. Suicide certainly isn't pretty. And to be frankly honest, this pales in comparison to some of the things that have gone through my head when I'm having uh, a bout of depression symptoms I'm having. Uh, struggles with that, that this, this pales in comparison to some of the thoughts that go through my mind. But I wanted to share, I had a therapist quite a few years ago, and I asked her if it was healthy for me to watch The Purge when I was angry. This was my, my go-to at the time was I'd watch The Purge Anarchy whenever I was really, really angry. It was my coping mechanism. Nowadays, it's the kill counts. Thank you. Thank you, James A. Janice. Uh, but I, I asked her, is it unhealthy for me to use this as a coping mechanism. And she said, let me ask you this. When you watch these things, is it inciting you to act in this violence that you're feeling in a violent way as you're feeling? Or is it validating these thoughts that you're having and giving you a healthy way to process them? Not validating as in saying that they're that they're okay, that it's okay to do these kinds of things, but validating that, okay, I'm really angry right now and this is how it's coming up. It's coming up in these violent depictions and I need uh, some way to process that. And my answer was, well, it's helping me process it. And I think oftentimes, for me at least, with my shadow, as I call her, she needs playtime and there, there have to be ways that I can indulge her without actually acting in a self-destructive way. And sometimes violent imagery will do that. And I can watch this video and say, you know what? I get it. And, and it's good that somebody else feels like that because now I don't feel alone. I don't feel so crazy for feeling this way. I will say I'm proud of myself because the hanging scene didn't get to me as much as it did in that disturbed video, that disturbed reaction that I did. So that means that I'm healing and growing that from that trauma. Uh, I, I did do quite a bit of exposure therapy for it, so it's not as as upsetting as it was before, but I still don't deal well with hanging scenes. But I, I support the message of this video, and I think that it was wonderfully constructed, and I think that it has a very powerful message, and I support the use of these, these images, these unsettling images, because again, sometimes the thoughts in our head are not sunshine and rainbows, and we need a way sometimes to process that. So whether your thoughts, whether your story is, is beautiful or whether it's it's got some some crazy stuff in there no matter where you're at i always say good bad and crazy share your mental health stories that's what this community is for is just a safe place to let you open up make sure you give this video a thumbs up share it you never know who might need to see it although i highly recommend putting a trigger warning if you do share this on your social media uh, while i am perfectly fine going through something like this at this point i know that seeing this at certain points might have been upsetting for me i i know that i would indulge in that when i needed it but i didn't want to be subjected to it if I wasn't ready and prepared and I wasn't in that kind of mindset. So I think it is kind to have uh, just trigger warnings and stuff for content like this, but I love it. I'm still loving Fallen in Reverse. I can't wait for my next, my next reaction. I can't wait for uh, whatever song gets recommended next. And I know another song is going to get requested after this. So I, I look forward to it. Give this video a thumbs up and I love you guys so much george thank you again for your support and for allowing me to have this experience today mm -hmm.